short oh, there's a short brace there. Look at that. An extra little brace there. This was made in 1912. It's the only original triple O 28 I've ever seen. With banjo tuners. These were not really banjo pegs, it was friction pegs, like a flamenco huh. guitar. Interesting. So let's keep in mind that that guitar was built when the Titanic went down. That's pretty wild. Wow. So what happened? What happened was that the the margin wanted to appeal to the you know the late twenties. The banjo players were transitioning to playing steel string guitar. You know, because in the jazz bands, they were really moving from banjo into guitar. So Perry Bechtel, who was Atlanta area banjo player, worked with them um, to try and develop a, a guitar that would really work for him. Uh, but curiously, if you actually look at the, the specifications for the, the original Perry Bechtel OM, it was almost like a Martin, uh, or almost like a Gibson in some of his concept of it. But what, what evolved out of this collaboration was was the orchestra model. This is a 1930 Brazilian Rosewood Adirondack Spruce, which was, you know, typical. The, the brace, the X brace sits right around there. Um, it's scalloped bracing. Um, you know, there are various aspects to the, the, the bracing construction of the 30s guitars. There's something called a popsicle brace that arrived late in the decade, because you, if you, you, you'll occasionally see Martins from the 30s where there's cracks appeared here because they decided they needed more support. Correct, George? Yes. Yeah. Um, but what happened was, you know, they, they had developed the OM be, so that these banjo players would... <laughs> but of course, all the jazz guitar players were all Italian guys from New York <laughs> who, played, who played Gibsons because they all played, you know, they followed Eddie Lang. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of volume and a lot of... Mojo. I mean, this is, you know, this is kind of a holy grail guitar, you know, of this era. Um, so the what happened was that the the OM, the orchestra model, was really the first modern Martin because it was they 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 put they changed the bridge. Did that had a pyramid bridge on it? Yes. Yeah. And actually, the, the earliest OMs even had a pyramid. Yeah, bridge. the very it's early very, OMs. Very few of them. Yeah, but, but they use what, this is called the belly bridge, because it just has a, a wider footprint. It, they, they were, you know, accommodating the fact that everybody was going from gut strings to steel strings. If you ever have a chance to play on gut strings, it's really cool. And you'd expect gut to somehow not stay in tune, and it's, remarkably, it does stay in tune. I have a Renaissance loop that I strung with gut, gut strings, which I don't recommend because it cost me 250 bucks. <laughs> and a lot of cats. <laughs> um, sorry, George. <laughs> um, but but it's, it's a really interesting sound. In fact, Martin has strung, in their museum, they've strung some of the 19th century guitars with gut. Uh -huh. And so what happened was that the, the, the changes that they brought into play with the orchestra model really became part of the Martin catalog in the 1930s to the extent that all their guitars, all their, their bigger guitars, certainly in the catalog, were described as orchestra models or sometimes as bass guitars. The Dreadnought in, in particular was described as a bass guitar because it had a big bottom end to it. Um, but the OM went away in 1930, by, by the end of 1933 because they weren't really selling in any quantity. Um, and they kind of disappeared for the longest time, and then Eric Schoenberg kind of revived it. And Eric, being a great ragtime guitar player, and recognizing the fact that um, you know these these kinds of it's just great for ragtime. Not this is a real ragtime piece. Interestingly enough, Paul McCartney wrote that when he was 16 on the piano. But if you, when I arranged it, I realized that the, what the, between what the piano was doing and what the uh, clarinets were doing, it could have been written, it could have been arranged by Chet Atkins, just yeah. right there and then, because it just it was the nature of it. Um, so Eric Schoenberg d 